So here is my uh, newest version of this file. And you don't have to pull up your bobbin thread or anything for this. And also, uh, you don't have to worry about the design stitching over a long jump thread because the basting stitch starts down here. So it starts here and it, it doesn't make any sort of tie on or anything and it makes about 10 stitches up to here and then makes a short jump to the design and then it makes its tie on and it's nice because those 10 stitches I mean even if your machine doesn't catch right away by like the fourth stitch it it would catch and you know and you still have those long thread tails and you know by the tenth stitch it would have caught and then when it jumps over to the design your tie-on has something sturdy to pull against you know because this basting stitch is established so it's kind of nice uh, it's a shorter length and yes, you can still pull up your bobbin thread here at the start of the basting stitch. But then you have a long thread tail to deal with. And also, if you don't hold it tight enough, the machine could drag the top thread along with it as it's making this basting stitch. And you could have a, a tangled mess there. So it's just really hard to hold that tight enough at the beginning. And I've actually been doing quite well with having enough of a tail once I release this, this basting stitch. I have enough of a tail to bury the threads just fine. You know, I usually take the top thread to the back and then bury them back there. But I'll show you how it works. And I accidentally touched the screen, so let me go back. And I just pulled this new design up. I didn't check for center, so let me do that real quick. I've gone through this so much, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So I'll hit... Actually, I can't remember if I pulled up a new design or not. Let me just go ahead and pull it up. Brand new, because I don't remember. So open. It's on the RCS. So every time, once I get the hoop loaded, I have to pull up the design again because the machine won't reset itself. Even if you press this button to, for it to go to center, yeah, the hoop goes to center here, but the edit screen still shows it being jogged when we jog. And it doesn't, the edit screen doesn't show your coordinates on how much you've jogged. So those two things are why we have to keep opening it. So here it is here, but my needles are already assigned. So I'll just jog it now. down because it only moves like 0.1 mils and if you move too fast it gives you an error and if you hold it down it it moves too fast <laughs> what I meant to say was if you click too fast it gives you an error and then if you hold it down too long it moves too fast <laughs> so okay. looks like I could go back Okay, that's about good. And then um, I'm going to fast forward across here and see. Uh, it looks like I'm centered. 
I'm good with that. So I'm going to go to the design, the next red color, which is the design. And so the design will start there to take my template off. And one thing I wanted to show is that I've been uh, experimenting with how I'm draping this on my table here. And it turns out that this little table is really all I need. And I just take the corners and drape it on top as well. And as long as I leave like a little canal around it, the machine, the carriage can move freely. I mean, the, the, most of the weight is up on the table. So, and this table is on wheels, so it's fine. And remember, this has to be pulled up. Uh, I'm at the very top edge. I've got like 12 inches pushed in, and I have it rolled towards me. But when this gets tight in here, it's almost better because then it doesn't move. It doesn't, you know, it, it keeps it sturdy, but it's fine. Now I'm on, I'm on the left side of the quilt top. So I'm going to move my table slightly to the right where most of this bulk is. And, you know, I still have this canal here. Okay. So since I had this locked down and I want the thread tail to be consistently the same length all the time, I'm going to just hit the thread trimmer here so that that, you know, goes needle up, needle down, cuts the thread and puts the thread back in the thread catcher. So, so then it's always the same consistent length. So now I, all I have to do is hit start. So it's going to start here. It's going to just make these basting stitches and then make a short jump to the tie-on. So there's no tie-on at the beginning. So I hit start once. I get that warning. And then I just hit it once to sew. And that's it, and that's all you have to do. I don't have to stop it or anything. So it did 10, 10 basting stitches and then jumped to the design. And I know this is hard to see on this particular hooping, so. And you'll notice my hooping, I came pretty close to the raw edge of this row or column or what have you here. And, you know, what is that, two and a half inches, two inches? I probably shouldn't have done that. I should have added a sashing or something or another column of you know, designs. I don't know what to make next, so, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I think I'll be okay, and I can always steam this if it gets wavy. I don't think it's going to get wavy, but... So this is my, actually, my last hooping of this long row that I have at the top where that wine, this wine colored log is. Well, it's at the top or the bottom, I don't know which. But after this is done, now I have to decide about if I, you know, want to cover up that wine colored log with applique. Once I, it started stitching over this log, 
it didn't look as bad, you know, because my thread is lighter. But I don't know, that log just kind of sticks out so much. And it doesn't match, it clashes with this. Now it will make its jump. Okay, so we'll take it out and I'll show you uh, how to release it and whatnot. Okay, so we'll pull up the slack here and put this on my table. So, I still don't think you can really see the stitches, the basting stitches. They start here. So you can kind of see them here. And, and you can see that mine didn't catch right away because this actually starts more like over here and it might have hit a seam here who knows but usually mine does catch but at any rate so one two three four five six and then it jumped so that's four that didn't catch but we still have our thread tail here and you just stick your tweezer under the you know, under the stitch length and lift up and then you know go around and you can even pull on this and that pulls out a loop of bobbin thread there you know, so you can do it in many different ways to get it to release. And then this one, when it makes its jump, it's usually a little bit tighter, but if you put your tweezer under the loop again, or under the stitch and pull up, you're fine. So here's your tail. It's only about three inches long, three and a half inches long. The bobbin tail on the back is shorter. That's because the bobbin doesn't have as lo long of a distance, so it's always a little shorter. So, um, but it made a really nice tie-on. See if I can zoom in on that. There's the tie-on. And, you know, this this is never coming out but if you want to bury it sometimes you can turn it over and pull on the bobbin thread but for the beginning stitches that's sometimes it doesn't it doesn't uh, pull the top thread through to the back because maybe the top thread got split by making the tie on and so on so a lot of times it's just easiest to manually bring this to the back and you'll want to go in the same hole that it came out of for this step now the ending one is so easy here tied off jumped over here you just put your tweezer under and pull up and it's it's done now this one you can you can pull on the bobbin thread on the back because it's the ending stitch. It doesn't stitch over its last penetration. So you can still get that loop. First we'll feed this one to the back. And I'll just use the snagit needle. And I'll just go in the same hole that it came out of and I'll slant my needle towards the stitching just to make sure. Now that's not the same hole because it's too hard to get in. And I 
I may not be right on because I'm too far away from it, but I'll put it in just a little bit. I'll snag it and then I'll go to the back because I'm going to the back anyways. And I'll just, I won't push it all the way. I just want to make sure that it's in the right spot, you know, before I pull it all the way. So it looks good. I went, you know, I'm right on the knot, so I'll continue pulling it through. And then here's the bobbin thread. And like I said, it's not very long. It's like three inches. So I'll take them both and pull them apart as if I'm tightening a knot. And then I make my single knot. Now again, I don't have much room, but... Uh, you know, normally I, I don't make them like this. I normally can stick my thumb in there, but I couldn't because they're too short. So you take your needle, put it through the loop. I'm going to pull on both of these so that they're similar in the loop because I want them to be the same length. And I'm going to hold them towards the stitching. So the stitching is right here and I'm going to hold the threads there but I'm going to put my needle in the loop a quarter of an inch away from where it came out of. I can't really see what I'm doing. I got to pull these Okay, now I got them together. So I got my needle pushed in a quarter inch away. And then I pull till it's tight on the needle. Pull out the needle. Now my knot is right there, a quarter of an inch away from where they came out. And then I'll try and go in kind of close to the knot, maybe underneath the next stitch. Or sometimes I can go underneath the knot and make a new hole. You just have to make a new hole to bury this. For it to lock in so and you want to just go in like sideways so that you're just in the batting and you want to make sure you're a quarter of an inch more than a quarter of an inch away and feel the back or feel the front to make sure you didn't penetrate the front Snap this thread in, if I could see. Boy. Okay. And then push it in a little bit so that you get a loop and then pull out some slack and then just push it in. And then I usually snap it while it's doubled up. I just feel like it's stronger, like they won't break, and it's snapped in. And you can't even see that knot. <laughs> Until your scissors, you're pulling the thread. And that's that. And then this one, I don't know if you could see that. When this bobbin thread, you just lift it up. This one you can pull on the bobbin thread and you'll get a loop of top thread. And there's a loop. And then you can just use your tweezers or your needle. Sometimes if you use your needle, you split the thread. Sometimes it's better to use some really nice tweezers that are pointy, you know, like these. So I got them both. Again, I'm going to pull them both apart. And now these are so long that I can do it the way I like to, which is take my finger, twist it all the way around, stick my thumb in the loop, take the thread, grab it, pull the loop back. And now um, I can pull the threads towards the stitching, which is to the left here. Put this needle in the loop 
quarter of an inch away from where they came out, but pull the threads kind of towards the stitching. When it's tight, pull the needle out. And then again, try to go in underneath the stitch and make a new hole. Check the front. I had my finger under the hoop, so I did check the front. Push it back a little, then push it forward to get some slack. And this is a mess because I snagged it on either side of the needle. I don't know if I should redo it because sometimes I can really hurt myself by doing that. Oh, did it again. So I can't see. Okay, so I'll push it back, push it forward, get some slack, and then, and again, I snap it usually while they're doubled up, but I didn't, I didn't get it. There's a loop there. Oh no, that's part of the design. There's a white design here, so it's, it's knotted. There's a white flower. I thought it was a loop. <laughs> like I thought I heard it. Whoops. So that's that, and so we'll pull on this, slant it, and then, so those knots are really nice, so wait, I didn't show the other one, so here's the ending knot. Right there. Those are always easy. So then the front, that's the ending knot. But it looks great. And then the beginning knot is up here. It's just a little dot. It looks like nothing. But, you know, there it is. It'll never come out. So that's that. It's just beautiful. All right, then. So now I get to do the applique. We'll talk to you later.